astrophysics for people in a hurry let's roll the intro The Cosmos on the Table Chapter 7 Tribal questions sometimes require deep and expansive knowledge of the cosmos just to answer them. In middle school chemistry class, I asked my teacher where the elements on the periodic table come from. He replied, Earth's crust. I will grant him that it's, a, it's surely where the supply lab gets them. But how did Earth crust acquire them? The answer must be astronomically. But in this case, do you actually need to know the origin and evolution of the universe to answer the question? Yes, you do. Only three of the natural occurring elements were manufactured in the Big Bang. The rest were forged in the high temperature hearts and explosive remains of dying stars, impaling subsequent generations of stars system to incorporate this enrichment, forming planets and in our case people. For many, the periodic table of chemical elements is a forgotten oddity, a chart of boxes filled with mysterious cryptic letters last encountered on the wall of high school chemistry class as the organizing principle for the chemical behavior of all known and yet to be discovered elements in the universe. The table instead thought to be a cultural icon, a testimony to the enterprise of science as an international human adventure conducted in laboratories, particles, accelerators and on the fortune of the cosmos itself. Yet every now and then, even a scientist can't help thinking a periodic table as a zoo of one-of-a-kind animals conceived by Dr. Suez. How else could we believe the sodium is a poisonous reactive metal than you can cut with a butter knife? While pure chlorine is a smelly, deadly gas, yet when added together, they make sodium chloride a harmless, biological, essential compound better known as a table salt. Or how about hydrogen and oxygen? One is an explosive gas, and the other promotes a violent combustion, yet the two combined makes liquid water which puts out fire. Amid these chemical conflagrations, we find elements significant to the cosmos. Allow me to offer the periodic table as viewed through the lens of an astrophysicist. With only one proton in its nucleus, hydrogen is the lightest and simplest element made entirely during the Big Bang. Out of the 94 natural occurring elements, hydrogen lays claim to more than two third of all the atoms in the human body and more than 90% of all the atoms in the cosmos on all scales right on down to the solar system. Hydrogen in the core of massive planet Jupiter is under so much pressure that it behaves more like a conductive metal than a gas, creating the strongest magnificent field among the planets. The English chemist Henry Cavendish discovered hydrogen in 1766 during his experiment with H2O. Hydrogenesis is Greek for water forming. But he is best known among astrophysicists as the first to calculate Earth's mass having measured an accurate value for the gravitational constant in Newton's famous equation for gravity. Every second of every day, 4.5 billion tons of fast-moving hydrogen nuclei are turned into energy as they slam together to make helium within the 15 million degree curve of the sun. Helium is widely recognized as an over-the-counter low-density gas than 
when inhaled temporarily increase the vibration frequency of our wind pipe and relax making you sound like a mickey mouse helium is the second simplest and second most abundant element in the universe although a distant second to hydrogen in abundance there are four times more of it than all the other elements in the universe combined one of the pillars of big bang cosmology is the prediction that in every region of the cosmos no less than about 10% of all atoms are helium manufactured in that percentage across the well mixed primeval fireball that was the birth of our universe since the thermomolecular function of hydrogen within stars gives you helium some regions of the cosmos could really accumulate more than their 10% share of helium but as predicted no one has ever found a region of the galaxy with less Some 30 years before it was discovered and isolated on Earth, astronomers detected helium in the spectrum of the sun's corona during the total eclipse of 1868. As noted earlier, the name helium was duly derived from Helios, the Greek sun god, and with 92% of hydrogen's biosy in the air but without its explosive characteristic helium is the gas of choice for the outside balloon characters of the maxi thanksgiving day parade making the department store second only to the us military as the nation's top users of the element lithium is the third simplest element in the universe with three protons in its nucleus like hydrogen and helium lithium was made in the big bang but unlike helium which can be manufactured in stellar cores lithium is destroyed by every known nuclear reaction another prediction of big bang cosmology is that we cannot expect no more than 1% of the atom in any region of the universe to be lithium no one has yet found a galaxy with more lithium than this upper lithium supplied by the big bang the combination of helium's upper limit and lithium's lower limit gives a potent dual concentrate on testes for big bang cosmology The element carbon can be found in more kinds of molecules than the sum of all other kinds of molecules combined. Give the abundance of carbon in the cosmos, forget in the cores of stars, plunge up their surfaces and release copulosity into the galaxy. A better element does not exist on which to base the chemistry and diversity of life. Just in ding out carbon in abundance rank, oxygen is common too. Forget and release in the remain of exploded stars both oxygen and carbon are major ingredient of life as we know it but what about life as we don't know it how about life based on the elements silicon silicon sits directly below carbon on the periodic table which means in the principle it can create the same portfolio of molecules that carbon does In the end we expect carbon to win because it's 10 times more abundant than silicon in the cosmos. But that doesn't stop science fiction writers who keep exobiologists on their toes, wondering what the for truly alien silicon based life forms would be like. In addition to be an active ingredient in table salt at the moment, sodium is the most common glowing gas in muni Special street lamp across the nation. They burn brighter and longer than incandescent bulbs. Although they may all soon be replaced by LEDs, which are even brighter at a given wattage and cheaper. Two varieties of sodium lamps are common: high pressure lamps, which look yellow white, and the rarer low pressure lamps, which look orange. turns out while all the light pollution is bad for astrophysics the low pressure sodium lamps are least bad because their contamination can be easily subtract from the telescope data in a model of cooperation the entire city of tucson arizona the nearest large municipality to the kitt peak national observatory has by agreement with the local astrophysicist convert all its street lights to low pressure and sodium lamps aluminum occupies nearly 10% of earth's crust yet was unknown to the ancient and unfamiliar to our great grandparents 
The element was not isolated and identified until 1827 and did not enter common household use until the late 1960s when tin cans and tin foil yielded to aluminum cans and of course aluminum foil polished aluminum makes near perfect reflector of visible light and is the coating of choice for nearly all telescope mirrors today titanium is titanium is 1.7 times denser than aluminum but it's more than twice as strong so titanium the ninth most abundant element in earth crust has become a modern darling of many applications such as military aircraft components and prosthetics that require a light strong metals for their task in most cosmic places the number of oxygen atoms exceeds that of carbon after every carbon atom has latched into the available oxygen atoms the left of oxygen bonds with other things like titanium the spectra of red star are real with the features traceable to titanium oxide which itself is no stranger to star on earth star sapphires and rubies furthermore the white paint used for telescope domes features titanium oxide which happens to be highly reflective is the infrared part of the spectrum greatly reducing the heat accumulated from sunlight in the air surrounding the telescope at nightfall with the dome open the air temperature near the telescope rapidly equals the temperature of the nighttime air allowing light from stars and other cosmic objects to be sharp and clear and while not directly named for a cosmic object titanium derives from the titanian a greek mythology titanian is saturn's largest moon by many measures iron ranks as the most important element in the universe massive stars manufactures elements in their core in sequence from helium to carbon to oxygen to nitrogen and so forth fourth all the way up the periodic table to iron with 26 protons and at least as many neutrons and its nucleus iron's old distinction comes from having the least total energy per nuclear particle of an element this means something quite simple if you split iron atoms via fission they will absorb energy and if you combine iron atoms via fusion they will also absorb energy stars however are in the business of making energy as high mass stars manufacture and accumulate iron in their cores they are nearly dead without a fertile source of energy the star collapses under its own weight and instantly rebounds in supernovas of supernova explosion outshining of billion suns for more than a week the soft matter gallium has such a low melting point that like cocoa butter it will liquidly on contact with your hand apart from this palladium or gallium is not interesting to astrophysicists except as one of the ingredient in the gallium chloride experiments used to detect elusive neutrinos from the sun a huge underground vat of liquid gallium chloride is monitored for any collisions between neutrons and gallium nuclei turning it into ga- germanium the encounter emits a spark of x-ray light that is measured every time a nucleus gets slimmed the long standing solar neutron problem where fewer neutrons were detected that predicted by solar theory was solved using telescopes such as this every form of the element technetium is radioactive not surprisingly it's found nowhere on earth except a particle accelerator where we make it on demand for this are not yet fully understood it technetium lives in a atmosphere for a select subset of red star this alone would 
not be cause for alarm except that the te- technetium has a half life of a mere 2 million years which is much much shorter than the age and life expectancy of the star in which it is found in other words the star cannot have been born with the stuff for if it were there would be none left by now there is also no known mechanism to create technetium in a star core and have it tritium itself up to the surface where it is observed which has led to exotic theories that have yet to achieve consequence in the astrophysicist community along with the osmineus and platinum indrium is one of the three heaviest elements on the table 2 cubic feet of its weight and such as a brick which makes indrium one of the world's best paper weights able to defy all known office fans iridium is also the world's famous smoking gun a thin layer of it can be found worldwide at the famous carrier boundary in geological strata dating for 65 million years ago not so coincidentally that's when every land species larger than a carry on suitcase were extinct including the legendary dinosaurs so whatever might have been your favorite theory for offering the dinosaur a killer asteroid the size of the mount everest from outer space should be at the top of your list i don't know how albert would have felt about this but an unknown element was discovered in the debris of the first hydrogen bomb test in the envito at all in the south pacific on november 1 1952 and was named anestrium in its honor i might have named it aramegidium instead meanwhile 10 entries in the periodic table get their names from objects that orbit the sun phosphorus comes from the greek for light bearing and was the ancient name of the planet venus when it appeared before sun in the dawn sky Selenium comes from selene which is greek from the moon named so because it owns it was associated with the element tellurium which had already been named for earth from the latium titlus on january 1 1801 the italian astronomer giuseppe fiazzi discovered a new planet orbiting the sun is the suspiciously large gap between mars and jupiter keeping with the tradition of naming planet about roman gods the object was named ceres after the goddess of harvest ceres is of course the root of the word cereal and that time there was sufficient excitement in the scientific community for the first element to be discovered after this day to be named cerium in its honor two years later another planet was discovered orbiting the sun in its same gap of ceres this one was named pallas from the roman goddess of wisdom and like cerium before it the first element discovered thereafter was named palladium in its honor the naming party would end a few decades later after dozens more than this planet we discovered sharing the same orbital zone closer analysis relieved that these objects were much much smaller than the same smallest known planets a new spot of real estate had been discovered in the solar system populated by small crack chunks of rock and metals ceres and pallas were not planets they are asteroids and they live in the asteroid belt now known to contain hundreds of thousands of objects some what more than the hun- number of elements in the periodic table the metal mercury liquid and runny at room temperature and the planet mercury the fastest of all planets in the solar system are both named for the speedy roman messenger god of the same name thorium is named for thor the hunky lightning bolt wielding cacadium god was corresponding with lightning bolt alas saturn my favorite planet has no element named for it but ares neptune and pluto are famously 
represented. The element uranium was discovered in 1789 and named in honor of the planet discovered by William Haskell just eight years later. All isotopes of uranium are unstable spontaneously decaying to lighter element and process accomplished by the release of energy. The first atomic bomb ever used in warfare and uranium as its active ingredient and was dropped by the United States, creating the Japanese city of the Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, with 92 protons packed in its nucleus. Uranium is widely described as the largest naturally occurring element. Although trace amounts of large elements can be found naturally where uranium ore is mined. If uranium deserves an element name in its honor, then so does Neptune, unlike uranium, however, which was discovered shortly after the planet. Neptune was discovered in 1940 in the Berkeley Catron, a full 97 years after the German astronomer John spotted the sky predicted by the French mathematician Joseph Leverrier after studying Uranus. Old orbital behavior. Just as Neptune comes right after Uranus in the solar system, so too does Neptune come right after Uranium in the periodic table of the element. The Berkeley Cratron discovered many elements not found in nature, including plutonium, which directly follows Neptune in the table and was named Pluto, which collected in 1929. As our attempt to measure Pluto's size became more and more refined, Pluto kept getting smaller and smaller. Our knowledge of Pluto's dimensions did not stabilize until the late smaller. Our knowledge of Pluto's dimensions did not stabilize until the late 1980s. We now know that core I give Pluto is far from the smallest of the nine, with the diminutive distinction of been lighter than the solar system's six largest moons. And like the asteroid, hundreds of more objects were later discovered in the outer solar system with orbits similar to that Pluto, signaling the end of the Pluto's tendrum as a planet and the revelation of a heritrophor under document reservoir of a small icy body called the Kuiper Belt of Comet, to which Pluto belonged in the Regard, one could argue that Ceres, Pallas, and Pluto slip into the periodic table under false pretense. Unstable weapons create plutonium was the active ingredient in the atomic bomb that the United States exploded over the Japanese city of Nagasaki just three days after Hiroshima, bringing a shift into the World War II. Small quantities of non weapon grade radioactive plutonium can be used to power radio stove thermoelectric generators for spacecraft that travel to the outer solar system where the intensity of sunlight has diminished b below the level unstable by solar panels. One pound of plutonium will generate 10 million kilowatts hours of heat energy which is enough to power and increase light bulb for 11,000 years or a human being for just a long if we ran on nuclear fuel instead of grocery store food. So ends our cosmic journey through the periodic table of chemical elements right to the edge of the solar system and beyond. For reasons I have yet to understand, many people don't like chemicals, which might explain the perennial movement to read foods for them. Perhaps subsequently chemical names just sound dangerous, but in that case we should blame the chemist and not the chemical themselves. Personally, I am quite comfortable with the chemicals anywhere in the universe. My favorite star, as well as my best friend, are all made up of them. Like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for the further videos.